real GDP. And Bloomberg Economics have been talking about the fact that uh, you really need this gap to be closed before we start worrying about any kind of recession. You, of course, have just kind of supported that point as well. So the argument from Bloomberg Economics is even if we get a pause from the Fed, they're still going to continue with their hiking cycle this year. If you agree with that, how should investors be rotating between assets in a fixed income portfolio this year? Yeah, I think we, we do agree with that. I think that gap can close very quickly. So it's a, there's a chance that that gap could uh, evaporate within about uh, two or three months. Um, I think what investors need to do is consider where they perhaps are going to take the most risk, where they want to take the most risk. And I think that in uh, government mm. uh, bond investing is less risk, but in corporate bond investing, because of that default cycle that's coming, there's a lot more risk. Paul, I was just looking at some of your synopsis of 2018. Emerging market bond, uh, emerging market sovereigns crushed down over 6%. We write a story this morning talking about dare, dare to believe in emerging markets. If there's a Fed pause with no recession and a slightly softer dollar, do I reach for yield in EM or do I take a little bit more risk? I think reaching for yield in EM is uh, not a bad idea. It's only as we suggested that's what we're doing. I think uh, the Fed rate cycle is one of the key determinants of performance in, in emerging markets. And if they're on hold, uh, then at, uh, on hold at a fairly low rate. Let's uh, not get away from the fact that uh, interest rates are not that high in the US. Uh, the problem, of course, is that if we are looking at any economic growth slowdown or a world growth slowdown, then some emerging markets are more vulnerable to that cycle as well. So you have to be selective. There's not a, just a blanket exposure. You need to choose your countries uh, carefully. So what I'm going to talk about, and he, he makes some great points, but uh, me as a real estate investor, I am actually looking into possibly buying into this market. Um, obviously, crypto has been very bad for me, but my real estate investments have been great. And if the Federal Reserve starts to lower interest rates, that's where I would become more aggressive. Um, supposedly, they're just putting a pause right now. And what he mentioned in the video is that if they raise the rates, if the rate hikes continue, and it, it possibly won't happen this year, but next year, um, then it, it does make sense to try to get into the real estate market to, to get a loan. Because as interest rates go higher, prices will come down. But at the same time, um, your cost of borrowing, it's, it's, it's huge. So um, my, my personal opinion is just watch, watch the market. Um, we, this is a really interesting time because uh, depending on what the Federal Reserve does, it kind of dictates what kind of investment strategy you should have. And if this is all really confusing for you, if you're just a normal casual viewer, um, the best thing you can do is learn. And uh, I would say cash is king in this market. Maybe look for some higher yield. They did mention uh, uh, emerging market debt, and there are ETFs that you can look at. Um, to get into there. But for me, I am just waiting and watching the news. And, and really, it's like Groundhog's Day. I'm waiting to see what the Federal Reserve does, because that will really dictate what asset class you should be looking for. And also, if the dollar does get weaker, um, what's nice is your crypto assets should help hedge against that. So I know cryptocurrency has been a terrible investment in 2017 slash 18. But um, there is a possibility that we're going to have a rebound. Obviously, there's regulations and other good news coming for cryptocurrency, but just a weak dollar will allow it to push the prices back up. So be on the lookout for that. Let me know your thoughts on this, and I will talk to you soon.